Hello again from Relation Productions. Uh, today I've got a sort of a tool review for you. This is nothing I've bought recently or new or anything like that. I bought this back in 2015 for a specific project I had going. And uh, this is a Grizzly Model T10052 finger press or finger break or bending. Um, I bought this back in about 2015 for a project I was working on with a friend who does glass blowing. And what I had in mind for this was to make up these little boxes. I got a sample here I'll show you. They look something like this. These nice polished aluminum boxes, they're about three inches square by one inch deep. But that's initially what I bought the press for. And that never really panned out in the long run for that project. But uh, I still use it from time to time and I find it a somewhat useful tool for other fabrication purposes as well. But uh, looking at the press today, you can see this is not a stock unit. Uh, I bought this thing initially hoping for something a little bit higher quality. Uh, really, the biggest problem I had with this unit was the dies, the V dies that went down below here. You can see I've got a piece, of, a new one, which is made out of nylon. I specifically made up for forming those polished boxes so I could polish them flat and then bend them without scratching them too badly. And it worked out pretty well for that. But um, I'll show you. These are the original dies that it came with. I mean, they just, you know, I, I don't care what kind of bending you're doing if you're not looking to make something perfectly smooth or anything like that. But these just look horrendous as they come from the factory like this. They don't match up. They look like they're not finished right, like they weren't ground down. They missed a step in manufacturing. You know, initially I wrote to Grizzly and I told them, hey, you know, I think I need some new dies here because these ones don't look like they were made right. So they obliged me and they sent me some new ones and of course they looked exactly identical to these. All kind of slightly different sizes and of a very poor finish quality. You know, I wouldn't expect the press to work, you know, beautifully for the polished boxes I was working on. But even for anything else either, I can't see these these bottom dies working very well at all, being different sizes and so poorly crafted. That's that's the one problem I see on this unit that just is not acceptable in my eyes. You know, everything else, the you know, other things that I've done for improvements on this are just things from my own preference or taste, making the machine a little bit better. But you know, for what I paid, being about $180, knowing getting a Chinese machine of questionable quality, you know, it's all right though. But you know, the bottom dies that was not acceptable to me. Anyhow, besides that new improved bottom die that I put in there. Uh, you can see on the machine I've got a few other things I've modified on it. Uh, first of all, it had very large cams. This works with a cam action. You can see as I rotate this, the two cams on this bar, they press down on the top piece, which will in turn press these top blades into that bottom V-groove die. And initially, this had cams on which were quite a bit larger than this. They're almost three inches. I think they're just under something like two and three quarters or something. Very large, you know, about up to there, cams on there. And as I was using the machine, even with these smaller cams on here, you're not using the full travel of the cam. So I figured, you know, why not give yourself a little more leverage advantage and put some smaller cams on there. So that's just what I did, and I upgraded it from the uh, ones that were almost three inches down to ones that are now two inches. And all I did for that was I cut out just this just regular mild steel there that I turned down the lathe, and I put the uh, hole for the bar to slide through. And instead of messing with putting a um, kind of a keyway like the original ones had, which the keyway would also allow more slop. 
I'd noticed with the original, you'd move one, and there'd be a little bit of movement in one keyway and a little bit of movement on the other keyway, and they would add up to a lot of slop where it really wasn't pressing evenly on that top bar. So I figured to make it simpler, all I would do, I just stuck it on the bar and I lined them up as best I could, make them real nice and even, and just welded them into place, and there they are. And they work quite well. I'm satisfied with how that turned out. Speaking of weld jobs, that's another thing I fixed up on this, was the handle initially, it threaded into this, uh, this, sh this shaft or this collar on the end. And when you put a lot of pressure on it, there was a wobble because the fit wasn't quite really that good. So I just welded that in place too and I fixed that sucker up nice and good there. Uh, also you can see initially there were some little um, ball oilers. Those little things where they'll have a spring and a ball and you'll press down on them and you can drop oil in there and it keeps debris out. Well when I got it one of them, one of the balls was totally missing from it and the other one was just kind of barely there. So what I ended up doing was enlarging the holes and sticking some this regular grease fittings in there instead for greasing the shafts. Uh, and that's proved that. And also you can see I started improving the little adjuster collars that determine how far down how much of a bend you can put onto it. And I started making, I have one, you see the original ones are black and the new ones are the brass ones there and each side has one. I started making these adjusters but I noticed that when I had the guides fastened to place they would drag on these holes up here. So I kind of gave up on that idea because there's no point in upgrading those if the, the whole shaft is not going to work correctly in the first place. Maybe in the future I'll fix that but for now I guess I'll leave that and they work well enough if you leave them loose. and that's pretty much all the improvements that I've done on this machine. Uh, I might fix up a few things in the future. I like to take these upper blades and as you can see they don't quite line up. They, they work well enough for, for the most part for making longer bends on but they still don't quite line up with each other. I'd like to re-grind them someday and see if I can fit them in a little bit more evenly with each other. Well, as you can see too, these blades, they compose the different fingers on this finger brake. So, like those boxes which I was working on, if I wanted to bend something, and I wanted to bend the sides and bend inside of it, I can take out all the fingers except for, say, this one here in the middle. And I can get right into the middle of the box there and make that bend. That's what's so special about these finger brakes. And that's one of the reasons why I bought this particular machine, because this press style brake has a depth of three inches, which is quite a bit more than the other ones about this size, which will only do about an inch depth for a box. Whether I really needed that or not, I don't know, but it has come in handy on occasion in the past and probably will in the future too. But that's basically an overview of the machine. Overall, for what I paid for it, which was about 180 bucks, it wasn't bad. But like I've told people in the past, you know, I pretty much feel like I bought a kit. I didn't really buy a machine. I bought something that was almost ready to use, but still needed a few upgrades to make it work better. Mostly, like I said, it's that bottom, it's the bottom uh, die that I have an issue with. It's just, as they come, it's just not acceptable for any, any sort of use. They just look awful and there's no reason for that. I badly would pay, you know, $300 or so if the machine had a better fit and finish on it and if those dies were manufactured correctly. But, you know, overall I've gotten this thing to work out pretty well and it's been a pretty useful machine on occasion. Uh, as you can see here, this is my most recent use of the machine. It is bending uh, a channel for a um, blasting cabinet which I'm working on. This is going to be the inlet channel and it's going to cover over a hole sort of forming a duct to let the air in without letting material out. But this bending brake has worked very well for that. 
as you can see did a pretty decent job on this uh, mild thin gauge steel here and just before I leave you with that we'll just do one real quick bend here I just got a piece of this is just real thin galvanized steel and you can see you know it works pretty well especially on thin stuff and stuff that's a narrow width and you can adjust it. I think it will bend a little bit beyond a 90 degree angle. But for most purposes, 90 degrees are usually what I'm looking for. Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching as always. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. Also, in the future, if there's anything you'd be interested in seeing, hearing from me about, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. Any format changes you'd like to see, as I'm trying to make up a few more videos more frequently on this channel and uh, your input would be greatly appreciated on that. Anyhow until next time